Thanks so much. How's it going? Bonjour. It's so good to be in Canada. In fact, we're really liking Canada a lot these days. We'd like to stay here if it's okay with you. <laughs> but it's a, it's a real uh, pleasure to be back with the guys. We, um, we're doing, this is the seventh show, the seven nights that we've done. We saw each other about a year ago. And it all just came right back, and uh, you guys are my brothers. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> so we're going to be digging into some uh, deep cuts, some, uh, some old stuff, some, um, some of the things people want to hear, some of the things we want to hear. This is one from the very first record. This is a two-part, two-parter. It's, uh, it's called Mars Needs Women. Uh, and uh, the first part is called Space is a Lonely Place, and the second part is called They're Here. <laughs> Thank you. 
I really don't. I really don't know what we were thinking back in 1989 when we worked that sucker up. Well, how about it for Victor Lamont Wooten on the bass? <laughs> we used to call Victor the Flectone's secret weapon because nobody had heard anything like it, and uh, the secret seems to be out, Victor. So. Uh, I'm going to ask Victor to choose the next song from this list of songs that we have some chance of getting through and see what he wants to call. Okay, uh, many, many years ago, we, uh, in our earlier years, we played this place in North Carolina. It was a big field, and um, their motto was like, all, ru all rules are temporarily suspended at this place whenever there was a concert. So we never knew what was going to happen. But the cool thing is whenever we played there, they had incredible food for us, home cooked at the owner Steve and his wife's house. And there was a, a dessert that they had that we named this song after. And it was a chocolate pudding with a graham cracker crust and, and cool whip on top. And uh, the name of that dessert is also the name of this song, and it's called Sex in a Pan. Thank you. 
All right, let's bring it over to the tall, thin, flectone, the man with two brains, two tongues. We don't know what all he has two of, but he's an amazing musician. Please welcome the one and only Howard Levy. Thank you. Four score and seven years ago, no, wait a minute. I haven't really given this much thought because we just finished the last tune. It's really great to be here again. This is the world's greatest jazz festival and we're so happy. to be here and, re and receive the, really the huge honor that we were bestowed, that was bestowed upon us and uh, really grateful for all the time I've spent playing with these wonderful musicians and so happy, thankful to be here right now. So uh, what should we play? <laughs> we're gonna do something that shows, uh, that'll test your ability to count. Uh, are there any uh, Bulgarian folk dancers in the audience? <laughs> One time I asked and three of them were there and they danced to this. It was really frightening. Uh, this, this tune is based on a Bulgarian dance rhythm in 11 that goes 2-2-3-2-2. Two, 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 two. And uh, that was the start of it. And then Bela and I collaborated on this piece and there's about every kind of 11 that you can think of in there. Um, it's as close to Spinal Tap as we get. And uh, first, before, I, before we play this, I'm going to uh, play some sort of introduction, and it's not going to be an 11. <laughs> Why isn't it an 11? <laughs> I, was, I was playing the John Cage piece. You interrupted me. <laughs>
All right. Life in 11. Hey, well, I'm going to introduce you to my brother over here. A lot of people didn't know that we are womb mates. Yeah. This guy is a few light years ahead of all of us. Playing an instrument of his own creation, the drum guitar, playing a kick drum that's on its side. He turns all the drums upside down and sideways, and I'm happy to be called his little brother. This is my big brother right here. We call him the future man. Oh, uh, yeah. How's everybody doing? What you got for us? What we going to uh, play? Uh, well, hey, hey, every, hey, hey, everybody. How you doing? Well, check this out right here. This is my drum set. My fingers are the drum sticks. Everything you hear is being played live. I can play saw. I can play fast. I can play slow. You know what I'm saying. Okay, y'all got drums, right? Mm. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna call a song, and I wanna call a song that, uh, Hurricane Camille. But I'm gonna do just a little bit of finger painting right here, and we're gonna go to a song called Hurricane Camille. All right, check this out.
All right, well, we're gonna, right now, we're gonna see what Bela Fleck has to uh, give us to play. Everyone's getting a chance to call a tune, and I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, we got a chance to win the Miles Davis Award today, and I think about Bela, thank you. I think about Bela taking a chance on four musicians, or, uh, you know, some other musicians to join him that were trying to do something different with their instruments and exploring in a different kind of way. And uh, when I talked with Bela on the phone the first time, he said a lot of people were trying to convince him that banjo should just stay in bluegrass and doesn't belong in jazz. 
And I remember we had a conversation saying, well, I said, Bela, um, when I looked at Louis Armstrong and those records back there, the banjo and his hot five was always right in the middle. And if you can play some jazz on that instrument, you might bring the banjo back to where it needs to be in jazz, like it was in Louis Armstrong's time. So here we are, full circle. <laughs> full circle, and uh, it's really an honor because uh, the Miles Davis Award, I think this is the first band to get that award. And Miles Davis had some very good bands. So it's a great honor. I want to thank you. Thank you for that. And we're going to turn it over to Baylor to see what surprise he has in store for us now. Baylor Fleck. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, we all do. Does this mean we can stay? <laughs> all right, we're going to do a tune now that's uh, uh, something new, actually. It's actually written about five years ago, uh, so that's newer than some of the 30-year-old tunes, right? This was a, written on a very special day in my family's uh, life, um, and it was the day that my son Juno was born. And on that day, um, Juno actually showed up about three weeks early and I thought I, I had one more show I had to play. I was on the West Coast. I was in, in San Francisco, and I live in Nashville. And by the, by the time I found out that uh, Abigail was in labor, there was no flight that would get me home till the next morning. So I had to go ahead and play the show, and I, I missed the birth, which was a real bummer. But anyway, I was on the, on the red eye after the show, midnight flight, and about 4 in the morning, I found myself in purgatory, which, of course, is Dallas-Fort Worth Airport at four in the morning. And all I had there was, I had my banjo with me and I thought, okay, I'm gonna come home and meet my son. Um, maybe I can bring a tune. So right then and there, I wrote this next piece and uh, the guys have been kind enough to learn it. And this is entitled Juno. Thanks.
Wow, thank you, thank you. You guys want to do the hippo thing? First, we, make, we need to make the sound of the scraping of his toenails on the runway. Sounds a lot like finger snaps right around here. One. Gentlemen, you'll be the male hippos. Here's your part. Ooh. Ooh. More masculine? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Keep it coming. Ooh. Ladies, stop laughing. It's your turn. Here's your part. Female hippos. Ah. A little more feminine? <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. 
Jeroboam has landed. 